Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here and spending a, a few minutes out of your day with me. And we are going to talk about the 10 natural miracles I found to lower stress in my body. And stress is an alarm clock. It's your body trying to communicate with you. And it's basically sending you alert notices. Um, but so few of us listen. And actually, um, I'm no different than you are. I've had the same thing happen to me, and I ignored it. And this is a very personal subject for me. Uh, stress made its presence known to me a couple of years ago, but I really didn't listen. I just kind of ignored the signs, and I knew... You know, my body was, you know, probably trying to get my attention, but I was just so busy, I didn't listen. So basically what happens is uh, my body's like, Donna's not listening to us anymore, so we are going to get her attention. Um, I was working like crazy hours. Um, we were getting ready to move, and I was adding more and more pressure to myself. And things were going on in my life that, um, you know... Pretty much most of my life, as long as I have my cultured foods and have a really good diet, I do great. But that was not the case um, when I got out of balance. And uh, food was so important, and it does address many of the issues in our life, but you still have to deal with what's going on in your mind, um, the things around you. You have to pay heed to those things. Because food can, off, can often fix many, many things, but sometimes it doesn't fix everything because your mind has gone off like a runaway train. And that's what happened to me. And I just kept adding more and more stress to my life, and I thought I'd just be fine. And then I started having an anxiety attack. Now, I had never had one of those before. And I couldn't control it, and I didn't know what it was, and it scared the pachibras out of me. Um, it scared me so bad that I would follow my husband around like a puppy dog, scared to be alone, and I was afraid. And this, it was just like coming out of nowhere. I went to my um, chiropractor, who I love, who told me that I had been working too much, and I was just having a little bit of a breakdown. And he, I sat in his office, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. And he told me that he had been through the very same thing in his life. And it was devastating to him because here he was trying to help people get well, and he couldn't even help himself. And the more he talked, the harder I cried. And he told me um, my mind was looking everywhere to find a disease or ailment that was causing all of this. Um, but I needed to surrender to it and learn from it, that something was going on that I needed to learn from. And then I just cried harder. And he said, uh, I said, it just, it couldn't be just stress, could it? And um, then finally, after weeks of searching, I just, I had to do something. I surrendered. And I prayed, teach me what I need to know, and I need to stop this. And then it was the funniest thing. Right after that, I started having dreams every night about people who had struggled with anxiety. My friends, some of my family members, even my dog, who who just got completely traumatized when our other dog died and he was alone. And uh, this was even something, some of these dreams were coming from things that had happened like 10 years ago. But in these dreams, I was seeing all these people in my life who'd had terrible anxiety. And I had compassion for them, but I didn't really understand it because I had never been there. And I didn't understand the panic attacks or the breakdowns because I'd never experienced anything like that before until then. And then everything switched inside of me. Um, I felt such compassion for people. I, and to this day, I, I well up when I see people struggling because I know what that feels like. And I, I had never experienced it before. Then everything switched inside of me. Things began to change and things I'd been stressing and worrying about began to change. And I stopped caring about it. And all I could feel was this love and compassion and gratefulness to be alive. Even if I was still struggling, I started to appreciate things at a very deep level. Because suddenly, you know, when things happen to you in your life, you get different blinders on. You get a different perception of your life. When you're struggling or when you're happy or you view, you view your life through different lenses. 
And this allowed me to view my life in a different way. And I started to do things differently and things that helped me so much that I thought I would share them with you. And when you're desperate, sometimes we need tools to help ourselves and methods that are a bridge for what you know, I have found has worked so effectively for me. You can't just eat perfect and expect everything to be all right and run yourself into the ground. That's what I have learned. Eventually, it will catch up with you. Lack of sleep, stress, physical exhaustion will shut you down, but also your mind going off on tangents will also set you off as well. And the first thing you need to do is to listen to what your body is trying to tell you. It is trying to get your attention and no matter how scary this feels, because it can feel terrifying. It felt terrifying to me. You need to surrender and you need to listen because your body is going to win and shut you down if you don't. So you need to just pay attention to what's happening. Try to calm down and surrender and ask your body to teach you what it needs to teach you and to show you what's going on. Number two, something that to this day, I do every day that helped me that I started back then was meditating. I could not calm my mind down so my body could not heal because my mind was a runaway train. What if this happens? And what if I do this? And what if, what if this could happen? And, and I just, I was in this state of panic. And I could only do five minutes a day because it was so bad. But I had to learn to control my mind just to stop thinking about it for five minutes. And then that turned into 10 minutes. And then it turned into uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. But it took a long time. But I had to almost train my mind to be quiet. It was like a bucking bronco. And I had to calm it down. And I would pick music or I had different meditations I would do. There's so many that you can do. Um, one I really liked by David G. He, you can find him on YouTube. He has some really good ones. They were simple, and his voice is so calming to me. And I did a lot of his. Um, I did a lot of Dr. Joe Dispenza's, and, um, but I couldn't do them very long. And I just practiced getting my mind to be quiet. Because here's what happens. When you're sleeping at night, that's when your body heals and repairs. Because you shut your mind down. Your body goes into a healing modality at night so that it can heal things. Well, when your mind is going nonstop 24 hours a day... Um, you've got to shut it down a little bit because you've got to stop looking at the thing that's causing you so much pain. And, and meditation is fantastic for that. And if you can learn to meditate, if you can learn to, to calm your mind down, even if it's only five to seven minutes a day, your body can begin to heal. Because when you keep looking at the same thing over and over again, your mind, your body can't change because you're you know, your your body's listening to what your mind is telling it. And if it's constantly telling it, it's sick, it's sick, it's sick, there's something wrong, there's something wrong, it just keeps manifesting that for you. And if you learn to pray and meditate, you know, and just stop thinking just for five to seven minutes, um, your body can begin to heal. And that was a very hard lesson for me, but I did learn to do it. There's some really good ones that you can do with breathing. Breathing helps a lot too. Um, the... I love the deep breathing meditations because you have to focus on your breath. And oxygenating your body is always good for your body. And it gives you something to focus on if you can't quiet your mind down. So that's another really good method is to find a, a deep breathing meditation because then you can focus on the breathing part. And uh, you're oxygenating your blood and um, it's very, very good for the body. And that helped me tremendously. Okay, number three. I drank two and a half to three cups of kefir a day when I was going through this, sometimes more. I normally only drink about a cup a day, but I needed the huge amounts of B12 and kefir. And one cup has about half the B12 you need in a day, and that is very calming to the central nervous system. So I needed more. I drank three. And sometimes that's all I had because it was the only thing that I could handle, and it was the only thing that calmed me down. Uh, a good friend of mine told me that she actually... Um, drank, did the same thing when she was stressed out. And she would drink two to three cups a day because it helped her so much. And, you know, there were days when that's all I drank was kefir because I couldn't handle anything else. And the results was a deep sleep that my, and my body would come down. And I did do it at night because it did help me sleep at night. 
But the B12 that's in it, along with the other nutrients, magnesium, minerals, there's so much stuff in kefir that helps you. Um, It was very, very calming to my body. Another wonderful thing that helped me was coconut water kefir. And it has a ton of electrolytes. It has a lot of potassium. And it's very calming to your blood pressure and elevated stress markers. And I loved the taste in the morning um, with a slice of fresh lime. And I have a new blog and uh, a recipe about that on my website. If you want to just type in coconut water kefir, I have several different ways to make it. But um, coconut water has uh, so many minerals in it and so many electrolytes, things that we need that our body's craving. And it is very soothing to the central nervous system. And so I did drink that a lot. And that helped me tremendously. It was funny because I didn't find that, I didn't drink it right away. But when I did start adding that, I noticed a big difference. Um, it, it was just, especially like in the afternoons and evenings, it was very, very helpful for me. And uh, there's there's more in coconut water than I think they've even discovered because there's so many, they use it for so many different things now to help people. But for me, for especially for somebody who has any kind of stress or anxiety, I would really recommend that because it's it's so good for you. And you can make it with either water kefir crystals or you can use, I have this thing called Easy Kefir, and you just put a package in coconut water and you let it ferment for a few days and it removes the sweet taste of it. And it basically is making probiotics and it gets a little bit bubbly. It has kind of a tart flavor, um, but a really good flavor. It gets very, very cloudy, kind of looks weird, but boy, does it help you. And it's easy to make. And and, and that happens really quickly in a couple of days. And then you can use a portion of that to make more. And it works really, really well. Okay, another thing, number five. This is something that I found that helps me so much. Passion flower vine tincture. It is liquid drops. And I think you can buy capsules too, but I use the liquid. And I would put it in my water and you, you need like a uh, dropper full. And it, what it does is it stops the crazy circular thinking that's going on in your head. It's like that. You ever have a, a thought and it just keeps looping around and looping around. You can't stop thinking it. That's what this does. It's a it's really interesting how it works to help you relax. Indians in America were the first people known in this hist- in our history to have found use for passion flower vine. And it's great for anxiety. It contains many flavonoids. And the flavonoids, crescent and benzoflavoin, they are the primary flavonoids in passion flower that have been responsible for decreasing anxiety. And they are believed to have the effect of increasing the amount of gamma amino acids uh, or, or GABA is what, how it's abbreviated, in the brain, much the same way a standard anti-anxiety medications are known to do. And it was um, also really interesting. Dr. Edward Bach uh, developed these flower remedies, which is a system of 38 flower remedies that help correct emotional imbalances when negative emotions are replaced with positive. And I've used passion flower on its own and found it was really, really effective. And it really helped me to calm down especially when I was in that place where I just couldn't get my brain to stop. It just had a natural effect on me. And I would just put a dropper full in a glass of water, sometimes two dropper fulls, and it really, really worked well. And it was a natural remedy, and I really am so grateful for it. Now, number six, the thing that probably helps me the most um, of these natural remedies was catnip. And I took catnip capsules. My, My daughter told me about how it had helped her. When she was stressed out, she took the tea, but I took the capsules and wow, it was really something. And it's very natural. I was talking to my chiropractor about it and he said, oh, it's, it doesn't really have the side effects. It's really a very wonderful thing for you. And it, it's good for you to, uh, it's, it's a good thing to take. It would really help you a lot. Well, it did. And uh, I couldn't believe how effective that was for me. And I had many uh, applications besides just anxiety it helped me with. But it has a natural, relaxing, and soothing property to it. And if you know, you know, they give it to cats and it does that to them, well, it does it to, to us too. And it's very safe and, and wonderful to use. And you can make it as a tea. I like the capsules. I thought they, it was just easier for me to, to take them. But it also helps improve digestion. It, it can even ease morning sickness, calms nerves, lowers blood pressure, and it even can help with fevers. And I have seen that. It does help with that. It helps reduce those um, 
the fever's down, when the fever's re- uh, were starting to get elevated, and it's a natural way to do it. It has a very relaxing property, and it's really good for those who suffer from insomnia, too. And you can get it in tea or capsule form, and I just got mine on Amazon, and it was really wonderful. You know, you should check with your health provider to make sure um, that that these are safe for you and that they don't, you know, mess up any other medication. But I can't tell you how much that helped me. And I took it every day for many, many months, and then eventually I didn't need it anymore. But I would say... Um, I liked the passion flower too, but I took the catnip the most, and that helped me. It sounds so crazy that I took that, but it worked really, really well. And the tea did, did too. I just sometimes I didn't have time to make it. So, okay, number seven. Let me go to number seven. Culture vegetables. Okay, now culture vegetables, and the juice from culture vegetables has massive amounts of vitamin C and B vitamins in them. And it is so good for your immune system. And I can't tell you how many times I just swig the juice from the jar because it would flood my body with vitamin C. And when you're under stress, you are using up extreme amounts of vitamin C, which helps run your adrenal glands. And so you need extra vitamin C when you are under stress because your body's just using it up and pumping it out. And you don't, you have to ingest it. It's not something that the body manufactures you've got to have vitamin C in your diet. So one of the things I always did in the afternoon was I always had cultured vegetables and or the juice, and I, I would always help me. It would always give me a lot of uh, a boost for my adrenals because you're going to be needing a lot of vitamin C. And you can take vitamin C in other forms too. I love cultured vegetables because they also um, help you assimilate other vitamins and minerals that you need, and you'll get more nutrients from the food you eat with it. But it works so fast. It works so wonderful. I mean, any any way that you can get vitamin C in your diet is going to help your adrenals that are under a lot of stress. Be it, you know, oranges or strawberries or grapefruit or any kind of vegetable or fruit that has vitamin C in it, I highly recommend doing it. And cultured vegetables, okay, one cup of cultured vegetables has 700 milligrams, whereas raw cabbage only has 60 milligrams. So you're going to get a lot more in your culture of vegetables and in the juice. And they helped me tremendously. Okay, number eight. The other thing that really helped me was yoga. I, I resisted doing this in the beginning, but my chiropractor really encouraged me to do it. And there have been tons of studies done um, on yoga done, you know, once or twice a day for 15 minutes works as well as anti-anxiety drugs. And I didn't believe him until I tried it, but 15 minutes once a day uh, made a believer out of me. It's like getting your mind and body connection going in some kind of a wonderful way. And even doing a little bit made a huge difference for me. And when your spine um, gets, gets limber and gets relaxed and starts to get a lot of movement, it's going to get a lot of rich blood going into it, and that is going to affect your whole body. And there's just something about that. Your spine is, and the, your limbs and your flexibility, you get blood to all the different parts of your body in ways that you normally wouldn't. And that rich, um, you know, oxygen into the bloodstream that comes through doing yoga affects everything. And it also connects your mind to your body. It calms you down in a way. I didn't believe them, but it does. It does work. And um, putting on like some soft music and even if you just do a few poses and just work up to it and just, it just calms you down. But it also, you know, starts to get that rich red blood flowing through all the parts of your body and your spine starts to get uh, more and more oxygen into it, which keeps you young, which keeps you healthier. And uh, they say it's the, the, depending on how flexible you are and how pliable you are, is it going to determine how young you're going to stay? And I actually believe that because I could feel myself calm down when I did it. And it was it was just like, I don't even know if I did 15 minutes a day. I might have even been 10. But it did really have an effect on me. Um, so one of the things that I did, too, that I always had a hard time with was, you know, I had to start paying attention to what my brain was telling me all the time. I had to start to, to replace the noise in my head because all of us have these programs running. We think about 50,000 to 70,000 thoughts per day. And that means that we have about 35 to 48 thoughts per minute. And 
your body is listening to what your mind is thinking and reflecting that back to you. And when you are constantly having negative thoughts, um, especially about your future or what's going to happen that hasn't even happened, it is it can take such a toll on your body. And I had to learn to reprogram my mind. And I had to learn to, to replace those scary thoughts I was having um, with new thoughts. And that was not easy. And a lot of it was, you know, telling yourself a new story. And one of the people that helped me the most was Dr. Joe Dispenza. And he has changed my life in so many ways. And uh, he's got some wonderful books about uh, breaking the habit of being yourself. And I really learned from him how to reprogram my mind because my mind was a runaway train. And um, I was creating a lot of fear in my life for really no reason. I was just, you know, what if this is going to happen? It was just from the anxiety. And I very slowly, it took me a long time, but very slowly I began to replace those thoughts with sometimes like I couldn't do it. So I just had to stop the thoughts altogether. And that was through meditation. But little by little, I was able to replace those programs that are running that were, that were scaring me and telling me all manner of crazy things. Because most of the time, those things never even happen, ever. It was just a thought. And uh, it was a, a very, you know, half the time the thoughts we're thinking aren't even real. It, it's just that we're creating these scenarios in our head. And I had to really learn to take control of that. And he helped me so much. And listening to mentors like him... Uh, there's so many on, you know, all over the internet that, that can inspire you, that can help you. And those were the things that, you know, really made a difference for me. Reaching out to people like my chiropractor and, uh, you know, people online who inspired me, who I felt help from. Uh, I'm so thankful that each of us have used our lives to help one another. When we struggle, we always find the answers and then we can help other people. And these mentors that are so available for so many of us, um, and I'm sure you've found some that have helped you too. And maybe I went through all of this so that I could help find answers for somebody who's struggling, and hopefully this will help you too. Um, I'm thankful that I went through it. I'm thankful that my chiropractor told me to surrender, do meditation and yoga. Um, I'm thankful that I found some supplements to help me, some natural supplements, uh, that I slowed down and gave... Um, gave some more joy back to my life. I'm in such a better place now, guys. I, I've gotten really efficient. I put systems into place to get myself really efficient. And um, then I take some days off or, you know, take some time off and go do some stuff I love. I have, you know, I there are certain things. Getting out in nature is so important to me. It just calms me down. And I need it. I just need to be out connected to the earth. Um, you know, the earth has... The dirt in the in the earth has natural microbes in it that work like Prozac. If, you, if you're gardening, I mean, I went out yesterday and planted a bunch of succulents in my yard, things like that that really helped me to connect to not only just you know calming my mind down, but just getting out there in nature, taking walks, um, whatever you can do, really is essential to connecting you back to your true self. Um, as crazy as it all sounds. Um, this was a really hard time for me, and it was such a blessing. It uh, it really recentered me. It made me focus in a different way, and it made me start enjoying life again in a way that I really needed to. Uh, when we moved and we moved closer to our kids, I spent a lot more time with my family doing fun things that I would never have done before. Never. I mean, I went to Disneyland for the first time in my life, you know, and I think I was the oldest person there who had never been to Disneyland. And I felt like I had the, I had so much fun and I didn't even know if I really wanted to go, but I had so much fun. I was walking around <laughs> Disneyland, looking at all these people and grown men. They were 40 years old wearing Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse hats and shirts and everybody had on shirts. And I thought I'm in an entirely other universe. And I saw the house where, uh, you know, the cr creator of Disney where he lived with his family. And I saw the the joy that he had in making people happy. And I would just well up because I thought he he did this to bring joy into people's lives. And I just, we had so much fun that day. And, you know, it wasn't a few weeks later that we went whale watching and we had saw massive whales and 
uh, you know, we, we'll go pick apples and we do all these fun things that I wasn't doing those types of things before I was just working all the time. And, uh, life is supposed to be fun. Life is supposed to be enjoyed. And we have such a short amount of time on this earth that we give our energy to things that we love and appreciate. I love my work. I have to tell you, I love doing what I do. Uh, but I, I need to get out in nature too. That really, really helps me. And I have found some crazy things that have helped me. Uh, Cleaning and organizing actually makes me feel better for some crazy reason. I'm not sure why. And I don't know if it's just that it gives me something to focus on and allows me to accomplish a task. But it really, really does help me. And um, everybody needs a little hope. And that's the first step. And I hope that, that I'm giving you a little bit of hope. When you're sick and in despair and you can't really jump into imagining perfect health, it's just too big of a jump. It just puts too much pressure on you to think, oh, I'm going to be healthy. You can't, you can't make that big leap. So you have to start small and you have to retrain your mind and your actions and then your body will follow. And it's doable. It can happen. And just start with three little things. You know, find a phrase that makes you feel better. And whenever you have those scary thoughts... You know, something as simple as it's possible, it can happen, things are always working out for me. I said things like that to myself over and over again until my mind started to believe it. And I had a little bracelet that I wear on my hand and it had little beads and I would just touch each bead and say, things are always working out for me. This is always doable. This is possible. And I would just say them as I touched each bead. Um, And my brain kind of got retrained because it, it replaced those scary thoughts that I was having. And I said it over and over again um, whenever I would get afraid. And I would find things to listen to, um, podcasts, radio, YouTube, whatever that would inspire me, that help, would give me a sense of, of comfort. And I would tune into the shows and I would listen to them. And I listened to other people who had overcome what I had. Um, change your diet in some way, you know, even if it's just a Kiva smoothie. I really, really know this will help you. It helped me so much. And it's always helped me. And I just, sometimes I had to up it when I needed it. And all of these things have made such a difference for me. One other thing that really did help too was a, um, an herb called holy basil. That was another uh, very calming one. I found that kind of later on, but that really did help me too. And if you haven't heard of holy basil, it's really good. Uh, it's similar to uh, some of the other ones I've talked about, but it's great for lowering inflammation. It's great for reducing stress. I don't recommend you staying on these long term though. Um, they are they are strong and they can, you know, build up in the system too if you take them for too long. But I think I took them for mm, I'm trying to remember now, six to seven months and I did fine with them. But I did take all of these and they really helped me tremendously. And then I didn't need them anymore and I got better and everything calmed down and It was a very interesting journey for me, needless to say. Um, But hopefully some of this will help you. I'm sure there's a lot of other things out there that can help and work. But these are the things that I tried. And so I'm just sharing with you what worked for me. You know, always check with your doctor too. Um, But some of the things I recommend are just food. They're not even medicine. And they do work like medicine. And uh, try some coconut water. uh, Coconut water. Water with uh, made with easy kefir or made with water kefir grains, and drink some kefir, some cultured vegetables. Kombucha is another wonderful one that's very wonderful that helps reduce some inflammation throughout your body. It was, it's really good for one thing I noticed. It was really good for was joints pain, any kind of joint pain. If I had a whole sixteen ounces a day, that really helped me because sometimes when you're creating these hormones, these stress hormones in your body, it creates inflammation. Your body is like a it's like a pharmaceutical factory and it makes all these different drugs inside your body and they rival drugs on the market in ways that um, we don't even understand. We can't really see what's going on, but it creates inflammation. It can create all different kinds of hormones, but it also, if it can make you sick, your body can make you well. And we forget that the same body that made us sick is, is the one that can make us well, but we're kind of captain of our ships. And so we're sending out signals and we're doing things with our life and we need to work together with our bodies to bring everything back into balance. I don't pretend to hold all the answers. I'm just telling you what I did. Um, And I would have been very thankful to have heard something like this 
when I was struggling. And uh, I hope this will help you. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And if you do wind up in a time in your life when you're feeling a lot of anxiety and stress, just know that it doesn't last forever, that it's going to be okay. And seek wellness with all your heart, change your diet, take some of these natural supplements, meditate, maybe do some yoga, maybe do these things one by one, but you will find your way just like I did. I believe in wellness more than I believe in anything else. And I believe in you guys. So have a wonderful week. And once again, thanks for listening.